Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to downtown Kent, Washington for tonight's MASL action between the Tacoma Stars and the visiting Dallas Sidekicks. My name is John McLamory, joined as always with my Brandon Sparks up here in the broadcast center, ready to bring you some exciting MASL action with the Stars. They're going to look to go back to 500 for the first time in a long time. They come into the game with a 7 8 record. Last Friday, they played down in Tremont, came away with a 6 4 win. The game will look comfortably at the end, but at 5 2 at halftime. They ended up holding on for the victory on Friday night, but a victory nonetheless. And uh, like I said, they'll be looking to beat up their record here tonight. Absolutely, Trey. You've been on the season taking on these 6 and 8 Dallas Celtics. And John, this is a really important stretch of the season for the Stars. They play Turlock, they come back home here, play Dallas, they get a game against El Paso, and then a couple games against Turlock. And then you go back to the real part of this schedule, where it's the game against Ontario and San Diego. So this stretch against these teams is very, very critical, and this is a big one tonight. Absolutely. Anytime you get a game at home, it's crucial. This is the home game of the season. This ends the season on three road games. So it's important to get these wins at home, especially against the teams they've beaten already here in the Dallas Sidekicks game. Not even the sixth and second home game of the season. And the Stars, they are not the season by player coach and story here. Nick Blair, 43 points, leads the MASF. Yeah, 19 goals, 24 assists. He's been fantastic in managing the team as well after taking over for Darren Solotsky. He's been very good. For the Sidekicks, Nick Moore, a league winner, has made the watch tonight. 18 goals on the season. One big missing name, though, Juan Gamboa will not be a goal for them tonight. Did not make the trip. Absolutely. And same with uh, their second leading scorer, Bernardino Calcante. He is out as well tonight. And we are getting ready to go here at the show where it's It is Washington State Youth Soccer Hall of Fame night. We are expecting a good crowd. We've got some festivities coming up at halftime. Notable names going into the Washington State Youth Soccer Hall of Fame. Uh, Casey Keller and Hope Solo, Chris Anderson, and most others. And as we get ready to go here, it's Vince Moore League standing tall in the center circle. Waiting for the smoke to clear here in the show. And ready to get things out of the way. We mentioned earlier, the Stars come into this game at 7 and 8, a half a game behind the Ontario Fury, who are in action right now as we speak. And they are playing at home against the RGD 
Now, he is near our time right now at 4 p.m. in the third quarter. So we'll keep an eye on that one as the night progresses. Yeah, it starts just a, what about half, half game behind Ontario? And Ontario is 8 and 8 this season. So, Ontario does have the lead at this moment. And so, we'll be doing a little bit of scoreboard watching uh, while we get ready to play here. I don't know what the, what the delay is right now, but Vic Moore Ligue that's well, off of the field. Well, that's because Vic Moore Ligue wasn't going to be starting line. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Every game they submit us a. Uh, Across the he was not the starter, and so that seems needed to be And the players jump around, and We're still waiting to get that. Let's try to get the roster sorted out. It looks like the officials. Double checking the active roster as they get the players out of the field. So we've got uh, now we've got Carlos Medina in the center circle. We have another player just come on. So tell us not quite sure what's going on here tonight. Here we go. I think we're going to get a front of the center. Now the side kicks on the ball, and this is how they will go. This one remains Carlos Medina. Playing a little one two eight Sonaldo. Good to save a little little knee action back to Mike Reynolds. Carlos Medina came in over the top and crashed into Sonaldo. Sonaldo, so that is one thing that the Stars did not have happen. Because they do not have a backup keeper on their roster, so we can only hope that Sonaldo is okay. Yeah, he's going to be fine. He stands up there, and still falling on by Carlos Videla. That was an awkward play generally as Michael Ramos went down, shielded it, and needed it back to Sonaldo. I've never seen anybody just kind of. Kneel over the ball like that. Well, yeah, I didn't quite understand why he was doing that. But it was a great thing. Clear his hand ball that he's been around on the left side for the rebound. Now the side gets left. And here comes the side kick on the screen. The offense is really tasty. It's a bad one. It's a good thing. And he just plays it back. Gets the ball to the big one. Now back to the goalkeeper. Just to see if you know, one can ball up, but he's not here to see that. He's just a kind of match. He's passing. Not really simple. I think it's somehow they look at that the worst the way of back there. You know, Bill Carlock out on the field right now to grab. And if nobody can just get it back, Tyrell will not go on the field for it. Tyrell looking to go ball. Sonaldo coming up over the right line there, plays it down to Freya for a back line side to the middle. He's only like uh, taking more of a defensive role in, in this year's iteration of the Not the post up presence we used to see. Now Freya makes it in this goes to the corner, stops, turns back, turns back again, sealed it off the ball. Great play by Ray Aguado. Tacoma maintains possession of Troy Peterson, finds Joe Jersey. Jersey plays it all into the corner. It's Pereira. Pereira looking for a runner. Can't find it. It's on him. Pereira turns, shoots just wide off the post. Now here comes the sidekicks looking to break. And break they will. Here comes the lead way. Big more lead way. In the corner, Bobby Dunn by Mikulski. 
take it off the ball by McCluskey. No foul. Here come the stars. Good defense by Vince McCluskey. Yeah, I was going to say, Vince McCluskey, very good defense there. The fact that he just got in there and held it up, didn't allow Leeway to deliver it to a wide open Lovegrove, who was, there was nobody on him for a good few seconds there. Yeah, Jamie Lovegrove is the type of person that's going to bury that if he gets it. He has 15 goals this season. He's third on the team. They were just good getting to it, so good job by the company that's going to go out and let's get the start of defense. This is Cortez. Cortez gives it to the Benefits. Pablo playing way up the field. Some pressure on him. Cortez launches the ball. Punched out of it by Sonaldo. And it's going to be a reset from the side for the side pitch. Just making his third start of the season. He's one and one this year. It's about 7.67 goals against average. Just 11 saves in two games. It's either not very good or very good defense. I can tell. I can tell. Nevertheless, heavy pressure by Lieber. Sonaldo on the far side. Heavy right from Sonaldo plays in the corner by Freya. Freya gets good pitch. Oh, tried to get a secret rebound, it's just played it out in front of him. Held in by the stars, but now cleared out by Dallas. And now the leagueway is going to chase it. The leagueway is going to get that first rebound. Start that. Rebound's pushed down to the ground. A leagueway with the stop save. But we're going to have a foul against El Paso, or against Dallas. Push at the back against Mike Ramos. That's going to go against number 41, Fernando Garza. Yeah, he just rode him down, and there was a little bit of a late call. And for a second, I questioned whether they were going to call it at all, but that's a good call. Michael Ray was just taken down from behind. Well, so he gets up by him to get back to, to force that. Now, the play in, up for Lund, trying to lay it off. Nobody there, but the defense is Lund, they're able to clear it for the sidekicks. Now, here comes Cortez. For number 21, Ray Abuelo. And Valadio back again for the Stars. And we're going to take it. Valadio still no shots on goal for Dallas. Only one for Stroma. Both teams are better. And they feel themselves out right now. Here comes Sonaldo on the near side. Sonaldo all day in front of us. Big punch to the back. Close to that two-year-old. Pereira on the left. There's somebody over. Punch 
Charles to play at Troy Gleason, where Okinawa followed the defense camera for a moment. Beautiful Hidalgo. Beautiful Hidalgo to south of Mayak. Now we have those parts of Mayak. They're not friends. It's about to be a little bit of 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 a little and they play once again, gets away from his man. Here comes Sonado. Sonado gets there first. So we're going to have a foul against Tacoma. Uh, they play the advantage, but good job on Sonado to get out there. Call the advantage and do something up for Dallas. Okay, let's bring up. McCluskey, McCluskey's held up, gets around the man, McCluskey once again, goes to his right foot, shot blocked, here comes Long back in, man goes down in the box, Long pulls it back out, sits to the cross, played out by Castor to the window. Kyrell plays it back to Sonata, boy it looked like McCluskey was going to be able to get a shot, and that was just blocked before he gets to the goal. Yeah, it took a little bit of extra time to try to get himself set, and I think it just got the uh, defense in the right position. Couldn't quite get under that the way you wanted to. No, I think when you have such a powerful right foot, you want to set that up. And just like you said, it's just a split second extra time to get that hit into the middle. Now Lundgren makes a big spin in the middle of the field. Finds the middle of triple team, plays it back. It's a Chicago Kaiser. Nelson now gets around Taylor Johnson now getting ready to play some defense, gets the ball down to the goal line. Back to Garza. Garza to Jones. Jones tried to find a shot. He was closed in by two players. Nelson now has to have him. That's from the end of wearing my favorite shoes of the season so far. Is it Fusa? I like a good fuse to see. Triple T. Nesco Hernandez gets the ball back, shoots it just wide. He has Sonaldo beat. It looked like the Leafs were contemplating to call it a foul against the, the Stars as the deal went out, but I think he just threw himself all the way back. Well, it is Oscars night, John, and uh, unfortunately the Daily did not win one. No, but in fact, we'll see that one about it. That was definitely still active there. 327 to go here in the first. 0 0 the score. Here comes Lovro. Gets around. Jersey, Jersey wins it. Lovro kicks it in and scores for Sonaldo. And out of the box. They couldn't get to it. And the shirt comes off for Jamie Lovro. 
a very cheeky little move there by Jamie Lovegrove. The search comes off, like you said, and it's a little bit early for the shirt removal, but he does put the side kicks up one to nothing with three points left here in the first quarter. Time to take it on the field. First stop at you quite some time, actually. Yeah, and I would say that that, that they say just goes against the run of players. The majority of the action is down to the Tacoma attacking zone. Jamie Lovegrove made a couple big moves. He got a big circle around the field. Found himself in plenty of space. He was able to just get past Jerks and then Sonaldo came out to try and cut off the angle there. And the Lovegrove just took off the pass with a good goal. Yeah, all the stars are chasing one. Lovegrove's 16th goal of the season. 19 points total. So a very nice, very tricky little move that he made. Put that ball past Sonaldo. It's Lovegrove. Probably even maybe not many English players have that. Not too which is kind of strange when you think about how it's insanely popular with the English players. They want so many outdoors because they're going to get so much of that none of them really come over and play the outdoors. They're English. Stars loaded for this season by Big Brother. What would you like to see over yourself? Second on that list, Philip Lowe with 18, Mike Ramos 17, Joey Jensen with 13, and Pablo De Silva with 12, five goals to seven assists, four to Silva. Pretty good offensive output for a guy going for his defense. Did you not ignore you might hear more about that? Where is that? Did you know that the MASL now has a podcast? Join host Craig Elston as he talks to players, officials, and coaches from across the league. It takes you behind the scenes of the NASL. Check it out at NASLsoccer.com. So listen to past episodes and subscribe to the official NASL podcast. Uh, you just missed the play that could have been talked about on that. Mike Ramos drinking right off of it after the kickoff. Just put a shot wide. Now Pereira holds it up, trying to find the Antonio behind him. Good job by Cody Ellis to bring that up. Pereira with a shot and the score! Nick Pereira did it himself with a nice curler around the keeper, Cortez, into the upper corner of the goal, and we are tied 1-2-1. One, one. Yeah, just a great shot by Nick Pereira from distance. Curls it around Cortez. Like Cortez, uh, not exactly one of the uh, larger goalkeepers you're going to see this season. He's listed at 5'8". Listed at 5'8". He was standing next to Mike Palmer moments ago, and I don't think he's even... Palmer is listed at 5'6". So they're very close in size. And that one just uh, got away from him. Yeah, just an outstanding effort. Nick Pereira has been uh, passing the ball a lot tonight, and then he found himself in some space. Good business himself, so good job of five minutes to tie this one up. That one of these now Cortez plays it off. Look at the love drop, love drop in the court, holds it in. He goes to the field, no foul call. There he comes, Eric Johnson. He'll slip up on his feet there. And that was Pereira's 30th goal this season, so I'm hitting the 30 mark. He, since he's come over from uh, since he's come over, joined the Tacoma Stars, he's just changed his team offensively big time. Absolutely. This is a team that was very balanced over the last three years. No true, like, mega goal scorer. And Nick Rayo has changed that on his own. Uh, now he backs up on Jones, and the shot comes in. Look for a rebound. Peterson couldn't get his shot. Comes in by Rayo. Flipped up off the shoulder. Oh, Dallas defender up into the corner area. This is going to be a fun game. Let's go. 155 remaining here in the quarter. Pereira looking to see who the pass this one to. Pereira. Plays it off for Ramos. Gets it across. To Silva with a shot blocked by Jones. Now Ramos with it. Gets it to Sinaldo over to Tim Tanksy. Pablo. Put out the ball, gets it back. By 
water with it. One thirty remained in his hand in the first quarter for a layoff for Tyrell. Off the boards, looking for somebody. Hanson tried to get that quick get it. Tell him to hold out by Jones, but only to a deep by Pereira. And Pereira does what he thinks juggling here and gets it back. It's a moment. Takes Hanson. Raphael pops up to take the run, and he does, and then McGuire gets the ball. Raphael around the corner, plays it off the boards, into the hands of Cortez. And it looked like Love Grove and Raphael came together in the corner, nothing to do with them. One to one, still scored 48 seconds to go in the corner. The Dana bodied up by Papa. Forced it all the way back to Michael Jones in the defensive zone. Up the side gets Cortez for Clark. Finds the Dana. So hand fighting there between the Dana and Papa. Right in front of the referee, not the call. Michael Jones gets past Pereira, plays it back to Lovejoy. Pablo breaks it up with 10 seconds to go. Long shot by Pereira right into the hands of Cortez. And that's going to do it here for the first quarter. And we will go into the quarter break tied at one. Goal of peace. We'll be right back after the quarter break. You're watching the Tacoma Stars Soccer on MASL TV. Mark your calendars and get your tickets now for Friday, March 1st, when we celebrate and honor Tacoma Stars legend, Rocky. Game time is 735 when the Stars host the El Paso Coyotes at the Excelsior Center. Center. In honor of the Stars legend, it's also Pretty Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. To guarantee yourself this one-time release of a Pretty Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 1st game. For questions or details, call one 844 stars or visit TacomaStars.com, click on tickets, and use the promo code PERKY at checkout. Sunday, March 10th, is a Stars game you won't want to miss. It's Danny Redman Bubblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. Join us as we celebrate one of the Tacoma Stars plays in the form of a limited edition Bubblehead. Tickets are available now, but Bubbleheads are limited. To secure your Danny Redman Bubblehead, purchase a $25 seat for the March 10th game. But the March 10th fun doesn't stop there. We're also inviting local mascot legends to go at it in a crazy and entertaining game of soccer during halftime. It's Tacoma vs. Seattle. For questions or details on our March 10th game, call 1 844 Stars 84. Or get more tickets now at TacomaStars.com. Click on tickets and use the promo code Danny at checkout. Don't get the kiddos out of the house and active this spring break with the Tacoma Stars Youth Soccer Camp. Bring the kids out on a day of professional soccer instruction from top Tacoma Stars players. And it's all presented by CDMD Urgent Care. Register your kids today at TacomaStars.com and give your kids a gift of soccer. 
Second quarter play. Dumped down into the corner by Cortez. Broken up. Stars chase Hanson now. High pressure put on by Dallas, and that ball just dumped to midfield. Track back and go get it. Now Cortez again just making his third start of the season. She was playing in his third game. I'm not completely sure if he started all three of those, but a lead led down into the corner. Shot off the side. Trying to get the rebound. It's put, punched back, and it's in midfield now. That is Cody Ellis. He'll get it back. And he will play it once again to Cortez. Sunday night crowd here at the Showwear Center in downtown Kent, Washington. Dumped into the corner, headed back to Sonaldo. He takes it down and will deliver. Now, Pablo will take a look. Of course, if you don't know the area, Kent, we're about 20 miles from Tacoma, up I 5 in the Auburn Valley. Yeah, Kent Valley. Kent Valley. Yeah. Is the valley seriously changed between the cities? I, I thought it, I've always thought it was called the Auburn Valley. I always thought it was the Kent Valley. Maybe it's just the Rainier Valley in this, this, uh, this area. That leaves it off. Peterson will get it over to Joey Jerks and Dan Antonia can now to Joseph Tyrell. Tyrell puts on a little bit of a move. Shot. Oh, right in the middle. Pereira. Whoa. Bing bombs around. And the shot blocked again. Peterson had that one. Cortez was nowhere to be found in front of the goal. But the Stars just couldn't quite get it in there. Good job on the line by the sidekicks. Now Pereira touched away. Peterson has to jump it, sends it into the stands. It is going to get off of one of the sidekicks. Now I just can't believe that Nick Pereira missed the wide open shot. It was deflected, but wow. Fox now, great block right in front of him as he took that shot. And a lead way. The double comes over and takes it away. Rafael Cox. Rafael Cox back with the team after a couple of games off. Of course, his brother, Jamel Cox, got down with FC Tucson. He went with Darren Swatsky to play some outdoor in the USL. And Jamel Cox with the team from the get go here. And he will certainly be missed. Absolutely. Pereira. Now Ramos takes it off the board. It takes a big hop off of the top of the hockey boards. In the sense of soccer boards. It's a multi purpose arena here at the Showway Center. Ball taken away. Dallas unable to get anything going forward at this moment. Is now a nice pass by Ramos. It's Lund. Lund will field it in the corner. The defense comes over to meet him. Work it back. McCluskey over to the far side. And now to Pereira. And that's taken away from the Stars. But again, Dallas can't come up with it, and so McCluskey will track back. Well, you can just tell the difference in speed between these two teams. Tacoma has much, much more speed than two speed. Now Pablo dumps that one up to Pereira. Pereira steps into the middle. The double team comes once again, and they will get it from him. Now Love Grove 
tries to step through, broken up, so he played back to Cortez. And now maybe Dallas will get something going forward. A weak way. Stop, harassed, and taken away. Pablo goes down, and they're going to get a foul against Pickmore Ligue. 10 10 remaining here in the first, the second quarter, excuse me. 1 to 1. Pablo will restart. And we'll play it back to Sinaldo. By star standards, it's been a strange season as far as gold papers go. Since the first season when they came into the league, Danny Waltman had started every single game. But after he got injured, Mike Arguello played, played one game, and now Sinaldo has been in goal for the last, since his fifth start of the season. Yeah, he's built it admirably. Uh, takes a lot of liberties with the uh, outside the box play, but we're getting used to that up here in the booth. And the, so far, so good as the Stars try to make their way back to 500 side. Push for the playoffs, we'll be healthy by that point. And you have to think, even though Sonaldo's played very well, in fact, he actually has a lower goals against average so far than Waldman did, but in a lot less games, of course. They have to wonder what's going to happen when Waldman is healthy and ready to come back. I mean, this is his team. You can't think that he's going to sit, but Sonaldo has played well. Yeah, this is definitely Danny Walton's team. He's a veteran as well. He's a local kid. He's, a, he's an indoor legend from this area, so yeah, he, he, you think that he would be done with that with open arms, of course. Seven shots on goal for the Stars so far, just two for the sidekicks. Stars holding possession now. Ramos. Nice turn, the shot saved by Cortez. He puts it against the boards. That was a nifty little spin by Michael Hemos to get himself some room to take that shot. I think he wanted to get a little bit more on that shot, just couldn't do it. Now taken away, Pereira in the middle. Peterson wants it, he fires, high. Rebound, taken down by Ramos, he leads it into the middle. Now Peterson couldn't quite come up with it. Taken down now. Dangerous pass. Cortez will finally clear it, but nobody's there for Dallas. The man was running off of the field at the time, so broken up by Tacoma, but sent into the stands. Definitely a dangerous turn of events there for Dallas. Lucky not to give away a goal in that sequence, and uh, lucky to get the ball back. And, uh, really good communication for you. Kind of feel like something's got to give here in a minute. The dam has got a break for the Stars. They've had the majority of possession, the majority of shots. Really, Dallas has not been dangerous at all. Case in point right there where that ball went up into the netting and uh, really no threat at all on that offensive possession. we got a timeout on the field, 7.46 remaining here in the second quarter. One to one tie game. Yeah. Brandon Sparks joined by John McLamory. And outside of being on the team, the best way to know what's happening in the NASL is to tune into Kick the List every weekend. Soccer Sam discusses the ins and outs of all the NASL action. Find Kick This every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Art Radio. If you are watching the MASL on MASL TV, the streaming home of the MASL. Tune in each week for live action, replays, and highlights from your favorite teams. Once again, this is MASL on MASL TV. How fantastic is it to be able to watch all of these games throughout the country, no matter where you are? You can just sit down and watch all the MASL games going on on a given night. 
really, really a fun league to keep up with during the season because you can see everybody play all the time. Yeah, it really is nice that you can the March 10th game. The way the league's set up, we don't see any of the teams from the Eastern Conference unless they make it to the Tuesday game. So it's nice to be able to see the Florida teams, the Harrisburg teams, the Baltimore Blast teams, the Phoenix teams that maybe you don't get to see on an in-person basis. Indeed, so just about ready to get back underway here at the Show Wear Center. Washington State Youth Soccer Night. Hall of Fame inductions later at halftime. If you're here in the building. Starts will restart. Pablo sends it up to Pereira. Oh, a little nice flick. Shirts and fires. Cortez with the save. And now Dallas will look to try to clear it. What a backheel by Nick Ferrer. And Joey Jerkson was wide open. He couldn't quite get his feet right to take that shot quickly. Now Cameron Brown to Love Grove and up to Cortez and back to Brown. Brown will take a look up. Pablo inching up on him. Into the middle, Hernandez, Nestor, harassed a bit by McCluskey, and he just ends up losing. It goes to Sinaldo. Nothing doing at all there again on offense for the sidekicks. Now Rafael Cox streaking down the near side into the corner. He stops. He's going to back it back out. This is to Lund. Peterson into the middle. Pereira with his back turned, spins. It's the man in the midst. Shoots. Oh, how did that miss? Just high. It looked good when he delivered it, and it just ended up hitting the top. Now Dallas on the brakes, and all the last year, too quickly, that shot into the middle and scores. Dallas has not been able to do anything offensively until they get out on the break, and uh, that was a fantastic delivery by Vic Moraliqua. Trying to see who that was that scored. Cameron Brown, the recipient of that pass, and he slots one home in the sidekick at a 2 to 1 lead with 6.14 remaining here in the second quarter. And that just shows you how cruel this game can be as Nick Pereira makes the defense look absolutely foolish as he gets the guy onto the ground, makes the turn, shoots it, and it just, it, you were exactly right. It looked in, and then all of a sudden it just kicked off the top of the post. And then the break starts, and Vic Moore and shows you why he's the leading point scorer. He delivers a beautiful cross field pass to Cameron Brown, who slides it past Sinaldo. And inexplicably, the Dallas Sightings have a lead here 2 to 1. Yeah, both goals. You said it earlier. You felt like that first goal was against the run of play. That was definitely against the run of play. Now the Stars will need to fight back. They've had the better of this game so far to find themselves down by one. Hanson to Jerson's shot blocked, and they're going to get a. They're going to call that a handball. Yeah, against Garza. Yeah, Garza, the man with the. Handball, he obviously does not like the call as he probably could hear him on the broadcast how, how loud he was. He howled when he got the That's a good whistle. Call. I mean, because he turned away from the shot, and I think his arm got in. I mean, it's probably the right call, but it's a, it's a tough call to make. So now Pereira will take a look. Hard to tell. It's always hard to tell who's actually going to take this. Pereira jerks him. Team up. Pereira does fire off of the boards and then off of back off of him. And now the break. Love throw in behind everybody. Makes a man that just barely misses. Ramos trying to get it out of there. Pablo will play it back to Sinaldo, who just almost slid into. Dangerous ball in the middle. Love throw flips it, but then Sinaldo is there. To stop the threat. And Sonaldo got a piece of that one that Lovegrove 
got in on him. He was wide open, one on one against the keeper, and Sonaldo able to get a leg to it. Quick restart taken by Pereira, but Hansen couldn't control it. And it goes into the star's bench. Caught by Dan Antonio. Step onto the field with the ball. Now Pablo, midfield, plays it up to Pereira. Leads it to Lund, Lund into the middle, wide open. Pablo makes a miss and scores! Pablo the Silva! A nice little move. He got Cortez down and he slots it home. Two to two tie game. Yeah, give the assist to Philip Lund. What an incredible pass. Right off the boards into a waiting. Pablo de Silva right in front of the 2019 Washington State Youth Soccer Hall of Fame class. And that'll tie this one up at two goals apiece. That was just a fantastic pass by Philip Lund. You know, Lund is uh, just in his second year of indoor soccer, and he knew the exact spot to put that ball in off of those boards to play it directly to the Silva. Fantastic play by Philip Lund. And what a move by the Silva. I think Cortez thought he was going to go one time, and he just kicked it over to his left foot. And there was nothing to stop him from scoring right there. Good job all around by the Stars. Dallas trying to go quickly up, but again, they play it up into the netting. Tie game to the two, 452 remaining here in the first half of play. My name is Brandon Sparks, joined by John McLamory tonight at the Showwear Center in Kent, Washington. Yeah, Brandon, a little starstruck as I see Casey Kelly down there, huh? the uh, pride of North Thurston High School. I thought that you and I, I was going to say, I thought that was you and me. Yeah. Yeah. So now Sonaldo up to Pereira. Oh, and it's, I don't know where everybody was going. He had an opportunity to shoot it, decides to pass. It's it to Ramos. And now, this again, we'll play it back to Peterson. Pereira had a, a, a nice little lane there. I'm surprised he didn't take it. And a, that's going to be a, either a bench violation or a substitution violation. That wasn't a blue card or anything. Just a stoppage. Pereira. Now Pereira into the middle. Controls. He will stop and play it over to Mike Reynolds. Reynolds fires. Oh my gosh. Cortez makes the save. And that last foul, whatever it was, was against uh, Garza. Commander Garza said that's his third of the half. So one more. That's a power play for it. It's from Stokes. Fox. Almost got it back from Pereira, but broken up and out. Another dangerous play as Pereira almost takes that away from TJ Nelson. Nelson will get it. He fires off the boards. Now Pablo will play it back. Pretty much just one shot, and that's it for the sidekicks this whole game so far. And I mean, on any possession, they have not really been able to control a rebound. Yeah, and if you take away those two goals on the breakaways, I think you have three shots of goals in the entire half almost. So that is a very low number. Now into the middle, Mr. Hernandez tracks it down. Working on Alex Megson. I think that's Megson's first action of the night. Tried to draw the foul was... The sidekicks player against Pablo, but he got an arm up high. Well, and if the sidekicks have read the tape on, uh, have seen the tape on the Pablo de Silva, they'll know that they can get under the skin a little bit. 
so far staying cool. Makes him. Hernandez steps to him, and then a yellow card is going to be called against the sidekicks. Referee John Snyder turns, obviously didn't like something he heard from the bench. Turns and yellows up the Dallas sidekicks bench. So, Simone Bosas, the coach, gets the yellow card. He must have said something on the list to uh, John Snyder. And then just yellow it up. Gustavo Pierre that will serve the penalty. That's going to take us down to six seconds left if Dallas can kill this thing. No, no, no you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a blue, not a blue card. It's a yellow card. I knew as soon as I said it, <laughs> I could see there were far more blood out sidekicks players on the field than I thought there were. But that long pause is me processing. You're in process, like just rebooting in my head. It's quite all right. <laughs> the pride of North Thurston High School, ladies and gentlemen. TJ Nelson gives it up now over to the far side, and Nelson will get it back. Into the middle. Jones, and now Nelson back. Cortez will send it deep into the corner. Legal fires, goes wide. One more shot again up into the netting. But they got the rebound on that one, so they were able to get to the second shot away. So now Sinaldo will lay it off to Dan Antonio. Antonio back to Sinaldo. Richardson. Back to Sinaldo. Trying to get something going moving forward here for the stars. You would <laughs> the way they have outplayed the sidekick so far in this half, you have to think that they would. I mean, obviously, you want to go into the half with the lead, but I think they're going inside. Going inside. Yeah, exactly. Or even down if Lovegrove can get anything going here. Lovegrove steps it back. 30 seconds remaining. Jones. Sidekick's bench trying to get the men's move, the men moving forward. Brown into the corner. And now 12 seconds left. Barrera lays it off to Joey Jerkson near side. Jerkson turns in the middle. He plays it to Peterson. Shot, but it goes right back to Jerkson. Jerkson will recover, but that's going to do it for the first half of play. As the stars and the sidekicks will head into the locker room tied two to two, we will be back in just a few minutes and after halftime for the call of the second half. Again, the stars two, sidekicks two. You're watching NASL TV. Mark your calendars and get your tickets now for Friday, March 1st, when we celebrate an honor to Tacoma Stars legend, Becky. 
Game time is 7.35 when the Stars host the El Paso Coyotes at the Accessory Silver Center. In honor of the Stars legend, it's also Becky Bobblehead Guy, presented by Sound Credit Union. To guarantee yourself this one-time release of a Becky Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 1st game. For questions or details, call one 844 Stars 84. Or visit the Comastars.com, click on tickets, and use the promo code Pucky at checkout. Sunday, March 10th, is a Stars game you won't want to miss. It's Danny Rapping Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. Join us as we celebrate one of the Tacoma Stars greats in the form of a limited edition Bobblehead. Tickets are available now, but Bobbleheads are limited. To secure your Danny Rapping Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat for the March 10th game. But the March 10th fun doesn't stop there. We're also inviting local mascot legends to go at it in a crazy and entertaining game of soccer during halftime. It's Tacoma vs. Seattle. For questions or details on our March 10th game, call 1 844 Stars 84 or give your tickets now to ComaStars.com. Click on tickets and use the promo code Daddy at checkout. Don't get the kiddos out of the house and act this spring break with the Tacoma Stars Youth Soccer Camp. Bring the kids out a day of professional soccer instruction from top Tacoma Stars players. And it's all presented by CDMD Urgent Care. Register your kids today at TacomaStars.com and give your kids the gift of soccer. <laughs> and get your tickets now for Friday, March 1st, when we celebrate in honor to Tacoma Stars legend, Lucky. Game time is 7.35 when the Stars host the El Paso Coyotes at the Accessor Silver Center. In honor of the Stars legend, it's also Plucky Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. To guarantee yourself this one-time release of a Plucky Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 1st game. For questions or details, call one. 844 Stars 84 or visit TacomaStars.com, click on tickets, and use the promo code Pricky at checkout. Sunday, March 10th, is a Stars game you won't want to miss. It's Danny Rapin Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. Join us as we celebrate one of the Tacoma Stars greats in the form of a limited edition Bobblehead. Tickets are available now, but Bobbleheads are limited. To secure your Danny Rapin Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat for the March 10th game. But the March 10th fun doesn't stop there. We're also inviting local mascot legends to go at it in a crazy and entertaining game of soccer during halftime. It's Tacoma vs. Seattle. For questions or details on our March 10th game, call 1 
844-STARS-84. For your more tickets now at TacomaStars.com. Click on tickets and use the promo code Danny at checkout. Don't get the kiddos out of the house and active this spring break with the Tacoma Stars Youth Soccer Camp. Bring the kids out for a day of professional soccer instruction from top Tacoma Stars players. And it's all presented by City MD Urgent Care. Register your kids today at TacomaStars.com and give your kids the gift of soccer. So I would say uh, the golden, the rice, and salt, and the things that actually makes that more of the Thank <laughs> you. 
orders and get your tickets now for Friday, March 1st, when we celebrate an honor to become a star's legend, Becky. Main time is 745 when the stars host the El Paso Coyotes at the Expresso Silver Center. In honor of the star's legend, it's also Becky Bobblehead Guy, presented by Sound Credit Union. To guarantee yourself this one-time release of a Becky Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 1st game. For questions or details, call 1 844 STARS 84 or visit the promostars.com, click on tickets, and use the promo code Twiggy at checkout. Sunday, March 10th, is a STARS game you won't want to miss. It's Danny Welcome Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. Join us as we celebrate one of the Tacoma Stars great in the form of a limited edition Bobblehead. Tickets are available now, but Bobbleheads are limited. To secure your Danny Welcome Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 10th game. But the March 10th fun doesn't stop there. We're also inviting local mascot legends to go at it in a crazy and entertaining game of soccer during halftime. It's Tacoma for Seattle. For questions or details on the March 10th game, call 1 844 STARS 84 or get your tickets now at TacomaStars.com. Click on tickets and use the promo code Getty at checkout. Mark your calendars and get your tickets now for Friday, March 1st, when we celebrate an honor to call the Stars legend, Becky. Game time is 745 when the Stars host the El Paso Coyotes at the Expresso Silver Center. In honor of the Stars legend, it's also Becky Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. To guarantee yourself this one-time release of a Becky Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 1st game. For questions or details, call 1. 844-STARS-84 or visit TacomaStars.com, click on tickets, and use the promo code Becky at checkout. Sunday, March 10th, is a Stars game you won't want to miss. It's Danny Rackman Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. Join us as we celebrate one of the Tacoma Stars greats in the form of a limited edition Bobblehead. Tickets are available now, but Bobbleheads are limited. To secure your Danny Rackman Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat for the March 10th game. But the March 10th fun doesn't stop there. We're also inviting local mascot legends to go at it in a crazy and entertaining game of soccer during halftime. It's Tacoma for Seattle. For questions or details on our March 10th game, call 1-844-STARS-84 or get your tickets now at TacomaStars.com. Click on tickets and use the promo code Getty at checkout. Don't get the kiddos out of the house and after this spring break with the Tacoma Stars Youth Soccer Camp. Bring the kids out for a day of professional soccer instruction from top Tacoma Stars players. And it's all presented by City MD Urgent Care. Register your kids today at TacomaStars.com and give your kids the gift of soccer. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. 
and get your tickets now for Friday, March 3rd, when we celebrate in honor to Tacoma Stars legend, Rocky. Game time is 7.35, when the Stars host the El Paso Coyotes at the Extenso Forward Center. In honor of the Stars legend, it's also Plenty Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. To guarantee yourself this one-time release of a Plenty Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 1st game. For questions or details, call one 844-STARS-84 or visit TacomaStars.com, click on tickets, and use the promo code PERKY at checkout. Sunday, March 10th, is a Stars game you won't want to miss. It's Danny Redman Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. Join us as we celebrate one of the Tacoma Stars plates in the form of a limited edition Bobblehead. Tickets are available now, but Bobbleheads are limited. To secure your Danny Redman Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat for the March 10th game. But the March 10th fun doesn't stop there. We're also inviting local mascot legends to go at it in a crazy and entertaining game of soccer during halftime. It's the Tacoma vs. Seattle. With questions or details on our March 10th game, call 1-844-STARS-84. Or we'll work tickets now at TacomaStars.com. Click on tickets and use the promo code DANNY at checkout. Don't get the kiddos out of the house and active this spring break with the Tacoma Stars Youth Soccer Camp. Bring the kids out for the day of professional soccer instruction from top Tacoma Stars players. And it's all presented by City MD Urgent Care. Register your kids today at TacomaStars.com and give your kids the gift of soccer. Welcome back to the Showwear Center here in downtown Kent, Washington. From the Stars and the Dallas Sidekicks all knotted up at 2-2. Two to two. Clearing the field after the Washington State Youth Soccer Hall of Fame ceremony wraps up. And John, is a very entertaining first half. Kind of an odd one, let's be honest. The Toma really felt like they dominated that first half of play. They have 13 shots on goal compared to just five for the Dallas Sidekicks. Really, the Sidekicks could not get anything going offensively. Holding the ball, trying to set anything up, they would take one shot, wouldn't be able to control a rebound, put it into the netting, whatever, and yet here they are tied two to two. You're right, and, and I would probably sum up the first half as saying, it was a half of missed opportunities for the stars and a half of, of advantageous 
uh, play by the Dallas Sidekicks. And Tacoma twice missed on opportunities to score, and Dallas turned right around, did a breakout, and put a goal in the back of the net completely against the run of play. And uh, this is where we stand as it is uh, a two to two here as we head into the third quarter of play. It's uh, almost everything to play for tonight. They need a win to stay you know, within shouting distance of the playoffs. Yeah, just half a game behind Ontario right now. We are watching the Ontario Fury RGB Barracuda's game. I believe it's in overtime still. Yes, 30 seconds remaining in overtime tied up at six weeks. So that is a huge game. If RGB could do us a favor and knock off the Fury, would be great. But the Stars also have to take advantage here and, and uh, take the initiative and get this win. Again, this is a, a really interesting stretch of games for the Stars who are 7-8, and eight, but they get a game against Turlock on Friday night, but they won 6-4. to four. Sidekicks, you know, it's kind of a middling team in the NSL this season. Then you get El Paso and then a couple of games against Turlock. And so this stretch before they go back and have to play Ontario and San Diego is so terribly important for them. And so far, they just have not been able to cash in on the opportunities that they've had. Yeah, you're right. And, and you look at the schedule, you want to circle these as very well the games at the beginning of the season games that you'll need to win if you want to make the playoffs. But you also probably talked out about those, that early road trip down to Texas where they, they kind of stumbled in that one. But uh, yeah, these are definitely games that they have to put in their back pocket and win. They want a chance to go out to San Diego and do that Pacific Division. Indeed, I think we'll look back on that road trip no matter what happens as being uh, one of the weirder. <laughs> there was a foul t- given to Fernando Garza at one point, and they decided to take that away, so. Not terribly interesting ball for the call of the third quarter here at John McLamory. Hey, thank you, Brandon. As we uh, get underway, Vicmore Leeway bodied up against the Silva double team. Here comes Jeff Johnson. Now, both players on the ground look like they were wrestling there, but uh, no call back. Tom Snyder says no. We're not going to call back. Oh, Leeway on the ground. Pablo on the ground. Pablo definitely grabbed him and didn't allow him to kind of get up, but no call. No call, and here comes Pablo on the far side. We'll keep an eye on that match. He's the ball of Ferreira. Ferreira bodied up by the young and smaller Cameron Brown. Don't give it an inch, though. Now the ball goes into Ramos. Ramos makes a turn. Ramos goes to get shoots, and Mike Ramos puts it in the back of the net. And the Tacoma Stars go out on top three to two. Mike Ramos. Puts the stars on top. And you had to feel that Mike Ramos was going to get one of those. <laughs> I like the celebration, shaking everybody's hand, the handshake line. You had a feeling he was going to get one of those pretty soon. He's been making those turns into really good position a couple of times. And that time he finally got himself into some great position and, and uh, slotted it home. Yeah, this is what the stars needed to do. They needed to come out and score early. You see Ramos posting up on Cody Ellis, and he just beats the goalkeeper Cortez right down the middle of the goal when he tight ropes down the blue line. And celebrates with his team and stars in a must win game. Now finally shows up 3 to 2 over the Dallas Cycle. That's goal number 10 for Mike Ramos this season. Puts him in double digits again. And in his reunion season with the Stars, and he took the last year off. Now, heavy pressure by the Stars leads to a turnover. Now, here comes Raphael Cox. Shoots it just on the near side of the post. Now, Lovegrove plays it out, but Cox comes back to Corral, and he plays it back to Sonaldo. Sonaldo wants it back, gets it back. Troy Peterson looking for Pereira, but finds Michael Jones instead. 
El Paso is going to take over. Pablo De Silva credited with the assist on that goal. This second point of the evening. Here's the 14 on the on the season. Ronaldo. We're in a shootout now in the, the RGB. So those of you keeping the pace of that game, we'll keep you updated. If you're watching us instead, we appreciate it, of course. Now Cortez dribbles up, finds the Silva. The Silva with plenty of room to move. Now here comes Pablo. Puts it back to the middle. Plays it over to Nick. Nick Brown is shot. Blocked by Cortez. Held in by Brown. Gets it back to Silva. Silva to Ramos. Ramos. Now McCluskey. Makes it. Now to Silva. Brown plays it in the middle. Lays it off for makes it. Makes it with the turnover, and now here comes. Oh, makes it wins it back, but they're going to call a foul against Alex. He started coming up forward. The sidekicks, 12 7 remaining here in the quarter. 3 to 2 is the score. Now, Nestor Hernandez with the ball gets to Aguayo. Aguayo gets past Ferreira. Now, looks to turn. Taken off the ball by McCluskey, held in by. Wild one here comes Garza. Garza finds Hernandez. Hernandez with shots. Oh. Nestor Hernandez with the goal. Pete Sinaldo in the upper B. He ties this one up again. Use the fuchsia boots. Nice play. Oh, I thought we were going to have a replay there, but it's a uh, strong shot by Nestor Hernandez. Found himself an opening. That time he didn't miss. Rick Whale with the assist on the play. And so once again, tied up 3-3. Three to three. It really looked like the Stars were going to have the momentum. But yeah, just a great shot right through the hands of Sonaldo. He might have got a hand on it, but just couldn't get it. Tyrell right now with the restart. Here comes the Stars. And Joseph Tyrell taken into the boards. No call. And here comes Fifthmore Elite And now a blue card is going to come out. I can see Pereira. Nick Pereira can't believe it. And that was a slide tackle by the keeper, Cortez, not called. Jones tries to get around Pereira. And that is about as weak of a wow. card as I've ever seen. You had a slide tackle moments before, but did not get called. A pretty clear one, too. And then Pereira, I, I guess they're getting in for boarding is the technical call, but he used his hips to shield the ball. To shield the ball from the player, and the player kind of got ripped into the boards on his own volition. So, power play coming up for the sidekicks. We've got Brown, Hernandez, Lovegrove, Fitmore, Alinque, and Fernando Garza on for them. Ramos, Hanson, Peterson, and De Silva are your penalty kill unit for the Tacoma Stars. Action. Out wide for this power play now. Goes in for Alinque. Held in. Taken out of there by Ramos, and Ramos can move if he wants to. Gets in the corner, chased by the big way. And now a foul is going to be called against Big Boy and Big Way. Jimmy Lovegrove, man to watch on this uh, power play. Five power play goals. Nobody else on the team with any more than one. Yeah, so looking for somebody to get the ball to. Finds Ramos in the corner. Ramos, fighting up by Lovegrove. Just waste of time at this point, doing a good job of it. Yeah, you get it stuck down there, a minute left in the penalty now. Yeah, good job by this penalty kill unit to waste time. Now 
Now here comes Dallas has him. There he goes. Finally, a man comes on. They were playing with only four for a moment as somebody got confused. Off the board, so good for a lead way. Cleared out by Pablo. Got cleared out. McCluskey chasing. Held in by the sidekicks. Left footed shot. Now, McCluskey was in. Gil Tacoma doing a fantastic job. That last shot there was by Billy O'Dwyer from Bucharest, Romania. Shot goes wide, blocked by Sinaldo. And cleared out. And with five seconds to go on the power play, Tacoma is going to do a successful job of killing this one off. Good job by the penalty kill unit for Tacoma. Cody Ellis with the ball now gets to Lovegrove. Lovegrove tries to get around Peterson, can't do it. Ball cleared out, McCluskey gets past Ellis. Taken down by Ellis. Ellis believes he didn't deserve that call, but the call nonetheless was made. 9-11 to go here in the third quarter. Down in the RGB, we're in round five of the shootout, still going. That field pops out with the big sun flies up. Comes to the middle, lays it off for the Silva. Pablo, down to LT Gray. Johnson can't control the ball, cleared out by Garza. Nick Moralibre looking to move, held up by Antonio. Sandalgo with the long ball in the corner, finds Raphael Cox! And Rock puts it in the back of the net for the score! Give the assist to Sinaldo as that long ball found Raphael Cox in the corner and he puts it right past Cortez. Yeah, it's a beautiful ball, a perfect bounce off of the board. Cox read it right in the perfect position. And they take a deserved a four to three lead after killing that power play. I mean, that power play by Dallas was a shambles. Well, they were playing for a good ten seconds without a fifth man on the field. As Billy O'Dwyer maybe didn't get the uh, memo when he was on the power play. And there you go. Stars just take advantage. Just the replay, the shot, just a perfect one timer off of the wall. That is a long distance wall to score. Up. And what a move by the wily veteran Sonaldo. Sees the streaking Raphael Cox. Puts it right on his feet. It's Coma on top once again. Now the ball cleared out by Nadella. But he's not happy. And Antonio, that defensive goal, driving. Uh, there it is, yep. He was begging for a yellow card. Eh? The official. Waited for one more thing to be said. Troy Peterson over here with the uh, fans just laughing at whatever was said. Well, the thing is, is that the data lost control of the ball and kicked it out of bounds on his own. So I don't, I don't know what he was calling for. Maybe, maybe he felt he was pushed. I don't know. But, uh, he's, he's begging for more, even. This official is not giving him any. Oh, he says one more. Got one more. Hey, he successfully made it into the box. There we go. Got to go on the restart. Still five on five. Is that how that works? Yeah, that's how that works. I had a little bit of confusion on that earlier. And uh, down in the RTP, Chris Coe putting on the master class of block. See that? We're in round six now. Still tied up. Keep you posted on that one. Sinaldo. 8.28 remaining here in the game. We're in the third quarter, excuse me. Long ball in, headed out by Cortez. I thought you should have grabbed that. That would have been a bad move on this part. Way back by Peterson. Peterson now to Sinaldo. Sinaldo. Pass it. Sinaldo in the mock turtle back to the uh, style of the MSL. Troy Peterson. Funny Zen Tony. Tyrell. 
we're trying to find a good here in the first quarter. They take the lead, but the plane is fixing right now, and I hope so. And it is a final now from the RGB, and the Barracuda will take the win tonight against the Ontario Three. And if the Stars hold on tonight, that will boost them into second place in the Pacific Division. Now we got a foul call in the corner. The foul's going to be against Ramos. Right there, now eight and nine on the season. I'm going to move up to eight and eight if they can hold on. Ronaldo, by the way. You're right, with the mock turtleneck. That's a look I haven't seen in the NFL. He's kind of, he could either be an indoor goalkeeper or uh, in the lodge at the ski, the ski lodge. Hey, you know, you make join the Frosty Beverage. You make what works work. It's been a little chilly here in the uh, Pacific Northwest, so maybe just uh, and you know, they're not used to it yet. So I'm again, part two potentially tomorrow. Uh, John, when Tony, so I'll throw the jigs out there. I'll do it. The kids go back to school next week, finally. Let's not talk snow again. Well, if uh, we do have snow again, you can get the latest news on the NASL and your favorite teams by following NASL Soccer on Facebook and Instagram and NASL Arena on Twitter. So if you're snowed in, you can always keep up with all the latest NASL news. Facebook and Instagram on MSL Soccer and MSL Arena. And uh, let's not forget the next game Friday. Apparently, it's just a snowboard set. It's the El Paso Coyote. It's a uh, Cracky Bobblehead Night on Friday, Brandon. Just to get down here. It's your Frankie Bobblehead celebrating the uh, Tacoma Stars U.S. national team against the Wizards legend Frankie. Bonus points for his last game. No, no bonus points. We're adding something, right? Yes. I didn't want to embarrass myself, but I did. So, there you go. It's, it is correct. Something is correct. We'll give you points for that. Well, the man who made it, the Tacoma Dome Rock, the Foot Thunder, back in the day. Fantastic player. Backflips off the side boards. The Brandon. I mean, that's why the current Tacoma Stars exist. That era of soccer, this nostalgia for this team, and they continued it long enough to make it keep going here. And I think the uh, game that might have got me to fall in love with the outdoor game when the U.S. national team beat Brazil. Tracky scored the game winning goal in case of another end goal for the U.S. that night. That was a fantastic game. Indeed. Goal shot by the U.S. 1994. Or 93, maybe. I don't know. Around that era. But nevertheless, Friday, join us here at 7 35 for a Tracky Bobble that night. Then the stars go all the way to Tremont on the 8th the following Friday. And then return home on the 10th for that standing Walton Bobble that night. Is March 10th, and that game will be here at the Excessive Showway Stadium. Started at 5 o'clock. So, a couple of big bobblehead nights coming up for the stars. And, uh, hopefully, they can get uh, about 500. Next Friday against El Paso, with two games to go against Tremont. Brandon, we'd be remiss not to talk about the trekking years without bringing up the. Uh, 687 championship game um, against these Dallas sidekicks, which was won by Dallas. Still the largest crowd to ever watch an indoor soccer game in the United States. That was cool. I was a little young at the time, but I do remember it. And I specifically, specifically remember half times when they would step all the kids into the cars. Yes. <laughs> yes, I had the opportunity. I don't think I really remember the game play. I was a little too young, but I very clearly remember that. Well, I remember that. I remember somebody used to always come to a Wichita game with a giant pair of paper scissors and said, flip those wings. 
things you remember from your childhood. Here comes Dirk that broke it up by a league way. A league way looks to move. Here comes Love Grove. Love Grove, a league way, and guards on the break. Three on two. Lead pass by Love Grove. Take the man By Sonaldo. Now here comes Dizzy Dan. Dizzy with the ball. Tripped up from behind by Garza. And cleared back to Cortez. Yeah, those were fun games with the Scrumbo for sure. The uh, first generation of these to come to Slugs. This one trying to get back into the championship series. But they've got to get into the playoffs race that starts with the win tonight. And they're on their way ahead 4 to 3. You know, Nick with about uh, 5 minutes to go here in the third quarter. So now, though, almost slid into by Cameron Brown. A couple times when it slid into the people of Sonaldo, it's a little bit of trouble. Now here comes Nestor. Nestor with the toe poke saved by Sonaldo. Nestor and this, this shot blocked by Ramos. Mike Palmer in the game now. Ball falls to Nestor. Nestor Hernandez scored earlier. This is back to Billy O'Dwyer. Dwyer gets that space and he's got space. Finds this for the Mavis. Next turn. Next turn. Turns again. Deep turning. Triple team makes a stop. Plays it back to Cody Ellis. And now they'll reset the offense. Cody Ellis gets it over. Yes, sir. Mavis. High line by the stars. Forcing the ball backwards. And back into the Dallas zone. 342 remaining here in the third quarter. Cortez finds the flyer and he can't control it and instead he kicks it high up into the glass. Out of play. He's going to be restarted on the side for the Stars. Jerkson. Now Pop Love. Ball stolen by Michael Jones. Michael Jones taken away by Nick Brer from behind. What a great helpful play by his coach. And now here comes Pablo. Throws the ball to Hanson. Chase Hanson. Right in the middle. Leaves it off for Jerson. Jerson taken off the ball by Garza. And now Dallas will reset their offense. McGuire. Now Love Road. With some space. Nobody with him, though. Love Road beats his man on the near side. Saved by Sonaldo. Now Dwyer gets past Johnson and loses the ball. Love Grove has it once again. Love Grove looks for a runner. Nobody there. Plays it back to David Brown. Now the ball forced all the way back to Cortez with 226 remaining in the quarter. Johnson Johnson steals the ball. Good job by Derek Johnson to play some help defense. But the league gets the ball first, shoots it just high over the head of Sonaldo. Lovro holds it in. Lovro looks to shoot, plays it over, broken up by Pablo. Lovro wins it back and he pulls down Pablo, and a foul is going to be called. Not a whole lot there. There wasn't a very strong pull down. Pablo made the wise move, though. He made the most of it. Just enough to go down. Now here comes Sonaldo. Finds Ramos and back to the goalkeeper. Plays it over there. Tony moves around. Plays it up to Ramos. Fine enough by Michael Jones. Got it. Tony for the run. Get it. Tony loses the ball. Has to play it back, and now Raphael will control it in the Tacoma defensive zone. They can get the ball up top. Nick Brer has got about a one foot height advantage on the defender. <laughs> but uh, Dallas playing a high line of defense can't give them any space to move forward. 
Now here comes Raphael. Now here's the back end of Raphael. Moves to his left. Shoots it just high. Saved and held in by the stars. Raphael now moves to his right. Onto his right foot. Plays off the boards. Broken up by Garza. Held in by Cox. He flicks it back into it. Oh, man. Somehow couldn't get it to Pereira. And Cortez comes away with it. Finds Nesto Hernandez on the break. Here come the sidekicks. Ellis plays it back to O'Dwyer. Now T.J. Nelson finds Cameron Brennan. 14 seconds to go. Ball played into the corner. Sonaldo chips it off the boards. And Peterson can't clear it, but here comes Cameron Brown. Off the boards again. Hernandez tries to get to it. Sonaldo spilled it, but is able to clear it. Cody Ellis couldn't hold it in in one and a half seconds remaining in the quarter. We're going to run out of time here. And the Stars, well, they forgot to start the clock. There we go. And the time's going to run out here in the third quarter. The Stars are going to take a 4-3 to three lead into the fourth quarter. We'll be right back with the call of the fourth quarter. You're watching MASL Soccer on MASL TV. Mark your calendars and get your tickets now for Friday, March 1st, when we celebrate in honor to Tacoma Stars legend, Becky. Game time is 735 when the Stars host the El Paso Coyotes at the Expresso Silver Center. In honor of the Stars legend, it's also Ricky Bobblehead Day, presented by Sound Credit Union. To guarantee yourself this one time release of a Ricky Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 1st game. For questions or details, call 1 844 Stars 84. Or visit the promostars.com, click on tickets, and use the promo code Ricky at checkout. Sunday, March 10th, is a Stars game you won't want to miss. It's Danny Waldman Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. Join us as we celebrate one of the Tacoma Stars greats in the form of a limited edition Bobblehead. Tickets are available now, but Bobbleheads are limited. To secure your Danny Waldman Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat for the March 10th game. But the March 10th fun doesn't stop there. We're also inviting local mascot legends to go at it in a crazy and entertaining game of soccer during halftime. It's Tacoma vs. Seattle. For questions or details on the March 10th game, call 1 844 STARS 84 or grab more tickets now at TacomaStars.com. Click on tickets and use the promo code DADDY at checkout. Help get the kiddos out of the house and active this spring break with the Tacoma Stars Youth Soccer Camp. Bring the kids out for a day of professional soccer instruction from top Tacoma Stars players. And it's all presented by City MD Urgent Care. Register your kids today at TacomaStars.com and give your kids the gift of soccer. <laughs>
welcome back to the Shower Center. Home of the third quarter ball toss into the minivan. Unfortunately, also home to the minivan backing into the goal mount. We have a little bit of a delay here as they go to fix that one. But uh, on the field, four to three is the score to come on top of the Dallas sidekicks. I'm John McLamley, joined as always by Brandon Sparks up here in the control center as we watch the uh, drama unfold on the pitch here the CHI Franciscan Health Field here at the Assistant Facility Center. Yeah, we got emergency surgery on <laughs> the boards as they try to fix this. I've kind of wondered over the past couple of years watching that band back out of this field. If it, one day, one day we would have to run into the side, but today is the day. Today is the day. Four to three, the Stars have the lead heading into the fourth quarter, and there we go. Now we got a live action shot of them fixing the goal mouth. We were not joking with you. Appropriate song can't hold us. <laughs> the field can't hold a band. But uh, here on the field, 17 to 10, the shots on goal in favor of the Stars. So the salt tied up at two. In, uh, tied up at two. And half time, they got a two to one advantage for the Stars in the third quarter. And uh, after finding out the Ontario score, a big game coming up, or a big quarter for the Stars as they like to get back to the second place in the division with a win. And, uh, on their way, goals tonight Pablo De Silva, Rafael Cox. Oh, man. It's just been a fun atmosphere tonight for the Stars. Of course, at halftime, we had the induction into the Washington Youth Soccer Hall of Fame. It's always nice to see that crowd here as well. Don't forget Friday night. Brecky bobblehead night. As the bongo cam goes here, we are underway for the action in the fourth quarter. Let's join Brandon Sparks on the ball. The Stars ball, they will have the first here in the fourth quarter, trying to get back to 500. Chase Hansen will have that ball just kicked straight into his hand and have the call go against him. Yes, the field did need some emergency work done to it. It looks like it is ready to go and back underway. Quickly up, backing down, turns, brought down. And Nestor Hernandez will come all the way back to midfield. And now the O'Dwyer, O'Dwyer sends it across. Played it back to mid to Ellis, and now back to Fernandez. O'Dwyer didn't see much. I don't think he saw any action in the first half, and he's been on the field quite a bit since about the midway through the third uh, period. Yeah, he didn't play at all in the first two periods of the game. And, uh, like you said, he's been probably on that power play in that late in the third quarter as well. Now a whistle down. Oh, we got a uh, big chunk of turf popped up in the corner, so stoppage of play as we fix that. The Tacoma Stars would like to thank MITRE USA for providing today's match balls. MITRE, founded in Huddersfield, England, is among the world's oldest sporting goods brands, started production, starting production in 1817. MITRE is a proud partner of the major arena soccer league providing arena-specific match balls to both the NASL and MASL 2. The NASL Miters share a long-term vision to see arena soccer grow in North America. Miters asked for the vision ball as the official game ball for NASL League play. And back underway. Dallas trying to work it in, down by one. Back across to Fernandez. Fernandez with Michael Ramos in front of him. Lays it off, but can't get it. Makes him trying to break it up. 
into the middle. Sonaldo goes down and makes the play. And he will get it back on the near side. Sends it deep. He's got Pereira up there. It goes all the way through. And stop it. Nestor. And I think they're going to call it a blue card. Issue to the stars. And I'm not sure for what exactly. Pablo is incensed right now after coming over and hearing the call, but it is going to be a blue card against the Tacoma Stars at a Too many men on the field. There you go. It's too many men. I did not see the extra man. Pablo is still giving it to people in the box, being asked to sit down. Finally does take a seat, as does John the Glamour. And we will get back underway. But this is a power play at a really crucial time. A bad mistake by the Stars is Dallas is down by just the one goal. And Let's be honest, Dallas was terrible on the power play earlier that the Stars killed off. Let's see if they can be a little more effective here. They really were. And, and Coach Graham made a tactical decision right there. He took Pablo to throw it out of the box. Has, and now Alex Mason is going to be uh, serving the penalty for too many men. And Pablo, a, a crucial part of that penalty kill, so it didn't make any sense to have him serve the penalty. So you've got Hanson, Peterson, Ramos, and the Silva now on the field for Tacoma. Nestor Hernandez goes back to Cameron Brown over to the far side and back to Brown once again. Love Grove is the man on the far side. Love Grove, who does have, like I said earlier, five power play goals this season. Love Grove slots one through, and there's his sixth tie game, four to four. As nobody closed him out, you could see him setting up and ready to go, but the Stars couldn't close it out, and he scores once again. And it makes it 4-4 four to four with 12.41 remaining. Yeah, and you can see here on the replay, wide open. Peterson couldn't get there to close it out in time, and nothing Sonaldo could do. He's still been not happy with the formation of the defense there. And we are tied again. And Tacoma unable to put this game away. And uh, find themselves tied once again, 4 to 4. And as we've mentioned numerous times, that's a game that they have to have. And the stars are coming a little unraveled, too, as they are arguing, not happy with the last call and not happy with what happened. And I think it kind of affected their play on the power play. Now, Pablo, get it to Jerkson. Puts him back to Pablo and gives it up. Now Dallas will have an opportunity here. Cortez sends it deep, Oligua, but there's Pablo in the way and we'll get it to Snaldo. Jerks him into the middle. ball bounced around quite a bit. Fans wanted a handball as it bounced off high off of his body. Now, Ligua, a little push. Oh, just tipped away by Antonio and Sinaldo fields it into the middle. Header kept in by Love Grove. Love Grove. And that ball cleared into the Stars' box. I think they would have got a foul against... One of the stars, they may have, in fact. And I think they just look so disjointed right now. Like, I don't know what happens. I don't know if it's still fallout from that blue ball. It's just not smooth at all on the offense or the defense of home for the stars. And then Nestor Hernandez on the far side, working on Jerkson. Played to TJ Nelson, Nelson to Jones, and Jones 
It's for a miss, but they can't do anything with it. That's a trap back. And he will play it back to Nelson. Nelson has got a lead up front doing battle with Pablo. Lays it off, and Rap Cox is there to keep it away from Nelson. Then he gets a little bit of a shove, and the foul is going to be called. And so a restart for the Stars. 4-4, 4 53 remaining. Game has not really seemed that evenly played. It seems the Stars have been the more dominant team, but boy, Dallas has taken advantage of their opportunities tonight. Limited opportunities that they have put the ball over the back of the net that they need to. Pereira has a high kick there. Plays it back to Kyrell. Kyrell over to Peterson. And Peterson will play it across to Vince McCluskey. The ball broken up because that pass is not very good. Hernandez. He will get it back from O'Dwyer, the Romanian sensation. One thing that I just now noticed is no Philip Love. And no Philip Love on the bench, so I don't know what's going on there, but he has not played his cap, and he's not on the bench. Yeah, I think you're right, exactly. Cortez played across to Jones. Jones will touch it back to Nelson. Now down into the corner, Love Grove, but he can't get there as jerks and Peterson, excuse me, shields it, and Sonaldo comes up with it. Sonaldo gets it back. Plus, he gets jumped by a leadway, and he's going to come up with it on the boards. Turns, and foul is going to be called against Vince McCluskey as Cameron Brown got there first. McCluskey turned his back into him. Knocked him over, and so Dallas will have the restart. Love Grove. Back to Brown over across to Jones. Jones fights through, takes it down in the corner, he fires. Sonaldo doesn't get much on. I don't know if he got a piece of it, it just goes off the boards and into the middle, but the stars are there to take it. If you know what he's there for Dallas for the rebound, if you know what he's there for the rebound, if you know what he's there for the rebound, if you know what he's there for the Hanson to Peterson. Peterson will play it up to Pereira. Pereira touches it, but Nestor Hernandez is the man there. Cortez will get it up to Oligua. Oligua spins on Peterson, now takes it down the boards. Has to get around John Snyder, the official. Now plays it back. Nestor Hernandez in the Fuchsia boots. Plays it into the middle. Gets the pass back on the wall. Puts it up high against the boards. Just nothing on that shot, and Sonaldo takes it. 8.05 remaining, 4 to 4. Raphael Cox to Hanson. And now Pablo, and back to Cox. Pablo will turn, take a look. Raphael Cox gets it once again. Got Antonio behind him. And I feel Cox is dribbling around for a while. Finally gives it up to Pablo. Pablo will send it in to Nick Pereira. Pereira with his back to the goals. Tries to turn. Plays to Cox. And now over to Antonio. The pace is by the stars right now. Not forcing anything. Looking for the open shot. Pereira. The foot on it, lays it, jerks it, great block, and that ball blocked all the way back into the Stars bench. That was Fernando Garza with the sliding block. As jerks it looked like he had an opening big time. That looked like a sure goal right there. Fernando Garza saw it as well and was able to scream across and get the block in. That was important for the sidekicks. As uh, there's a timeout now on the field, seven of nine remaining in the fourth quarter, and uh, we're all tied up at four. Eighteen to twelve. Your shots on goal. 
to Tacoma, as we've mentioned a few times tonight, looking to be on the front foot most of the evening. Just uh, a couple of glaring misses and a couple of great opportunistic counterattacks by Dallas. And that's where we stand in the 4 to 4 game. Finals from around the NASL, the St. Louis Kimbush knock off the Tropics, Florida Tropics, 10 to 9. Harrisburg Heat knock off the Mississauga Metro Stars, 9 to 5. The RGB Barracudas, they beat the Ontario Fury in a shootout. He went to overtime and still remained tied. And then the Stars and Sidekicks all mounted up here at four. One other score as well as missed the Kansas City Comets. Nine Orlando Seawolves, four. So a rough, rough day for the uh, Florida teams in the NASL. What's the Seawolves? Um, that's a very good question. I'm going to have to look that up and get back to you on Friday when the Stars take on the Orlando Comets. Here, Stars back underway with an turnover. Jones has his pocket pick though, and Pereira is going to get sandwiched between two players. Tripped up, foul. And I'm going to be fair here. That was more of a foul than the blue card that was called on Nick Pereira earlier in the game. But uh, just a common foul on that one. Billy Dwyer. Billy O'Dwyer. Now that ball going to be played back to Sinaldo. 6.42 remaining in the fourth quarter. Up to Pereira. Pereira flips it into the middle, but nobody's there. Ball will be played back and into the penalty box. Joseph Tyrell will restart. Pereira. Off the chest. Luskin and now over to Pablo. Pablo plays a short little pass to Tyrell into the middle. Pereira stops, faces up. Ramos and Pablo sneaks in there. Cortez comes out. Oligua. But then gives it up to Ramos. Ramos to McCluskey. Pablo wanted the game ball. Herrera, man all over him, but he goes down. That ball at the feet of Cortez, and the sidekicks clear it out of there. That ball went through the legs of Cortez. Nobody on the back side of the post for the stars. That could have been disaster for the sidekicks. Herrera with two men on him, leaves it off for McCluskey. Sends it back to Cox and now to Pablo. Pablo turns and gives it to Ramos. Some step overs, but just poked away and back. Starts that long string of possession here. Now Hanson, he's going to take a shot off of the boards just wide. Back to Ramos. Ramos. And he will not come away with it. And the league will now on a break. And uh, just enough, just a little touch to get that ball away. Pablo De Silva is having an outstanding game tonight. Brown tripped up and fouled by Hanson. A blue card coming. This is another big one. Four to four, four forty-nine left. Hanson with the blue card, so two-minute penalty coming up. In a just a moment, take a look at the replay. That's a uh, that's definitely uh, that's a slide. John, I can't tell by your expression if you agree or not. Well, I was just looking at the incident off the ball that happened right well, before. That's, that. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Between Mike Ramos, Nick Pereira, and Michael Jones, where nothing was called there. Nevertheless, power of the play, power play coming up for 
the sidekicks Ramos, McCluskey, De Silva, and Peterson. Far side, Lovegrove, who scored the power play goal earlier, just had far too much space in front of him, walked right up to him and smashed it home. Ellis, no fire one. He had Sonaldo going the other way, but starts lucky that that thing went a little bit high. I don't know where Sonaldo was going after that shot. He must have known it was high, I suppose. So that ball shoveled out of there as Ellis. And over to Brown. Brown, the man who drew the contact. Love Grove again. Plays it over to Ellis. Ellis. Love Grove just by himself over there. They could get it across to him. Ball played back to Sinaldo. Sinaldo will not clear it far enough. Ellis. And now Love Grove stops. One minute to go in the power play. Love Grove thought about the shot, fires against the boards. Comes out to Ellis. Ellis with McCluskey closing on him, gets it over to Brown. Brown fires it off to Michael Ramos right into his side. He's down for a moment. And then we'll have a stoppage as Michael Ramos took that ball into the ribs, I think. Yeah. So, three. It must have been a considerable amount of pain right off the knee. Oh, into the knee. So Ramos down right now. Four to four, three thirty-two remaining. Forty-three seconds left in the Dallas Sidekicks penalty. Actually, the Stars penalty. Power play for the Stars. Power play for the Sidekicks. <laughs> so Ramos again got hit in the knee. He'll get up here and have to limp off, but. So far, the Stars having a little bit of trouble clearing this on this power play. You keep seeing Lovegrove. He gets a lot of room over there. He has not been able to quite step into a shot yet. But you saw it on the last power play that he has that ability. And he can step into it, fire it low, and get it in there. It looks like Ramos is going to top it out as well. Sorry to interrupt, but I can't believe he's going to stay out there. Yeah, it's a bit of a surprise. He doesn't even look. He's still standing there very gingerly at the top. Now they will restart. Danger Zone comes back on. To the PA. But Ellis fires McCluskey with the block. That ball goes into the stands. 32 seconds remaining on the power play. Brown over to Love Road. Ellis keeps it in. He'll get it back. One more time. Now Love Grove. Coming into the middle. He can't come up with it. Nine seconds remaining on the power play. Ramos working his way downfield. And taking away Brown with the strip. But the stars are back at full strength. Brown fires. Sinaldo makes the save. Ball loose in the middle. Comes across. Sidekicks keep it in. And I can say what a difference between this power play kill and the last one. As the movement was crisp, they were closing down on the open shot takers. What a difference and what a kill when they needed it the most. Oh, Dwyer into the middle. It gets just past Nestor Hernandez and Sinaldo loves it and speeds it out to Peterson. 2.14 remaining in regulation. Fourth quarter of play. Hanson up to the top to Pablo. Hanson, once again. Jerkson has lost it because it back to Pablo. Pablo. And now to Tyrell. Tyrell. Off the board to Antonio. You're absolutely correct. Philip Lund has not played this out. It's, I, you can kind of feel the difference. He's, yeah, he's got a dangerous player. Yep. 
way he plays, and the way he gets into open space and takes this, as we said, the most powerful shot of our team. Maybe now that Ramos is back, that might be difficult. No. Up to Pereira. Pereira with Jones on him. A minute 12 remaining now. Jerkson. Across Tyrell. He's doing a good job of not letting anything pass, but Pereira turns. Oh, he slips. He goes down. Now McCluskey jumps that. Cortez makes the save. And now ball loose. McCluskey. Cortez retreats back into his goal. Jerkson will fire. Blocked. Hernandez. Into the middle, Pereira will come up with it. Pereira goes down on his butt. No foul call. And then that's Sue. Who's it going to be against? It? They're calling that foul against the Stars. It's off the ball. It's on, I think it's on Pereira. And then a timeout is going to be taken with 37.2 seconds left in a 4-4 four to four tie game. 21 shots on goal for the Stars, 15 for the Dallas Sidekicks. And not bigger than that last one. I thought for sure it was another goal, but Fernando Cortez with another outstanding save tonight. He's had a great game and goal for the Sidekicks. On the other side, so nice to Naldo, who about a minute ago saved a rocket off the foot. I believe it was uh, Fernando Garza who took the shot. And, uh, boy, we, this, we've been treated to some great goalkeeping play tonight. And uh, hopefully the Stars can get a goal here in the last 37.2 seconds of the game. My name is Brandon Sparks, joined by John McLamory tonight here at the Assesso Show Wear Center. Downtown Kent, Washington. Again, this is a crucial stretch of games for the Stars. They beat Turlock on Friday. Tonight, they need this win after Ontario lost down in Hidalgo, Texas, against the RGB Barracudas. And then they get a really a nice run of games, three straight against some of the teams that have been struggling this season, the El Paso Coyotes will be here next Friday in two games against Furlock, including a game here at the Showway Center on March 10th. So 37.2 seconds left. It will be side kicks ball. Vic Moore Ligue, standing in front of Dan and Antonio down low. Antonio, you were correct. They play him more of a, as a defensive player than the post forward that he typically has. And now another timeout is going to be taken as Dallas decided to take this one. Can't take him with you, Brandon. Nope, you cannot take those timeouts with you, so you might as well use them. And both the stars and the sidekicks have done so tonight. And, uh, yeah, both both the both, uh, both, uh, both goalkeepers playing very well tonight. Cortez again. This is just his third game. He has a goal against that goals against average of seven point six seven. Now just four tonight. And really, Dallas has not necessarily brought their top lines either tonight. With a couple of guys missing, they've just had a, a very good game. Tacoma is not able to cash in when they need to. Right. Uh, Tacoma's missed a couple open shots, so that's Joey Jason had a shot on an open goal. Maybe the guards are going to block that one out. Pereira missed a couple in the first quarter, but normally he wouldn't miss. And, you know, here we are. I mean, the, the stars are still in a must win situation. 37 seconds left before overtime, unless they can get a goal. The one thing they can't do, though, is allow the, the sidekicks to put one in the back of the net. And, uh, well, we'll see how they play defense here as we go out to the end of the quarter here. Cortez will send it up to Aligua. Aligua with Antonio all over, and they're allowing a lot of contact there in the final minute of play. Near side to Hernandez. Hernandez. Working on Raphael Cox. 22 seconds left. Ellis will get it back. 
Not by him, it's jumped by Rafael Cox, but sent deep. Kept it in. Garza was the man who kept it in. Hernandez steps it down. Hernandez absolutely buries. That's Derek Johnson. Derek Johnson. Maybe it wasn't as, uh, wasn't as hard as I thought it was originally, but a foul is going to be called against him, and it will be. Oh, it's pretty hard. Oh, okay. And we have yet another time out on the field here with 4.1 seconds remaining. I didn't realize we were down to 4.1. So one last opportunity, and the Stars want to set something up and try to get one last shot before heading into overtime. Good position to be in. You've got the ball. You know, virtually no chance for Dallas to score at this point. But if you can get one down and get a deflection maybe into the back of the net, hopefully avoid that golden goal overtime situation. It's uh, kind of a scary one in the game you got to win. No doubt about that. Don't want to go to the golden goals, although if you're at the home team, it's uh, I don't know the numbers on this, but it seems like you have a, a, an advantage. Just uh, in your brain, I guess, right? Yeah, I think you're, you're not tired of traveling for sure. That's got to be. That's got to be something. That's got to be something to that. Four point one seconds left. Rafael Cox and Pablo standing over the ball. Pablo will head in. So it'll be Cox that will deliver this. Antonio comes across that ball into the middle. Cortez, the shot blocked, and that will do it for the fourth quarter of play. A golden opportunity as that ball fell down. Cortez was caught in a bad position, and that ball blocked. I'm not 100% sure which player it was for the sidekick that was there on the line, but he clears it off, and we will go to overtime, 4-4. Four to four. Stars and sidekicks overtime coming up here on NASL TV. Mark your calendars and get your tickets now for Friday, March 1st, when we celebrate in honor to Tacoma Stars legend, Becky. Game time is 735 when the Stars host the El Paso Coyotes at the Expresso Solar Center. In honor of the Stars legend, it's also Plinky Bobblehead Day, presented by Sound Credit Union. To guarantee yourself this one-time release of a Plinky Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat to the March 1st game. For questions or details, call 1-844-STARS-84 or visit TacomaStars.com, click on tickets, and use the promo code PLINKY at checkout. Sunday, March 10th, is a Stars game you won't want to miss. It's Danny Rapping Bobblehead Night, presented by Sound Credit Union. Join us as we celebrate one of the Tacoma Stars greats in the form of a limited edition Bobblehead. Tickets are available now, but Bobbleheads are limited. To secure your Danny Rapping Bobblehead, purchase a $25 seat for the March 10th game. But the March 10th is not a new Stars coming up. One ten minute period, golden goal. Then we go to a shootout if we are tied at the end of that. So here with the call of the overtime period is John McGlennery. Thank you, Brandon. Bitmore Ligway gets it back to Cameron Brown. Cody Ellis on the field as well, along with Jason Lovegrove and 
Ray Aguayo. Long ball played into the red basket of Sonaldo, and he's going to come out on the far side, play it up and hands and hands with the back of Sonaldo. The other time, always a trepidatious period where nobody wants to make a mistake because of the golden goal rule. Every mistake is amplified. Pablo circles around the league way, circles back, pressing up, gets the ball to Sonaldo. Sonaldo plays it over to Ramos. Now Sonaldo. Long ball looking for Pereira. Just it down by Cortez. He's way off his line, and he plays it off the board. And we've got a foul. No, we've got an injury. It looks like Cortez is down as he came out way off his line. And, uh, he's going to be down. Let's take a look at it. We're not particularly happy with the stoppage there. Cortez is up. And we'll see there were some fans down there in the field. Taking something very not nice. <laughs> now, some discussion about who gets the ball. Victor Lugue wants the ball. And that ball got cleared out by Dallas. Now we got a drop ball. No, by Dallas, for the Ellis. Dallas over to Dallas and TJ Nelson. Back to Dallas. Cortez, long ball, looking for a lead way, kicks it right into the stands. No boards over there, and it's going to be a restart for the Stars. Quick restart, held in by Sonaldo, over to Peterson, that comes Garza to pressure him. 8.33 remaining in the overtime period. Jensen with it, blocked by Nestor, and it is held in by a lead way. Bring on Cooper, and it is on the far side. He takes the shot and scores. And that is the ball game. Nestor Hernandez with the game winning goal, and the Stars lose 5 to 4. Brutal way to lose there, just a turnover, and Nestor Hernandez buries it. That will drop the Tacoma Stars, unfortunately, to 7 and 9. They had such a golden opportunity to get in to a nice position with the Ontario loss tonight. But boy, they just could not shut the door, could not get on top. And they let Dallas stick around for a very long time. And eventually, Dallas made them pay, made them pay with the overtime goal. And your final is 5-4 Dallas over the Tacoma Stars. Let's take a look at the scoring in tonight's game. We'll start it started off. Started off with Jamie Lovegrove scored the first goal at the 11:39. Just a few minutes into the 11:39 left. Or actually, just into the first quarter. Excuse me, Jamie Lovegrove. Then Nick Pereira tied it up. Cameron Brown made it two to one, and Pablo De Silva tied it up. It was two to two at the half. Ramos and Rafael Cox each scored in the third period. With Nestor Hernandez scoring the one time, one time in that third period as well. And then Jamie Lovegrove in the fourth on a power play. That tied it up at four to four, and then Nestor Hernandez finishes things off here at the Showware Center. Just a couple of moments into the overtime period. So again, that drops Tacoma to seven and nine on this season. Their goal differential this season now is negative two. Ontario, they dropped to eight and nine with their loss to the RGB Barracuda, so still just a little bit behind. Ontario are 
the stars. And now we've got, looks like we've got John McLamory going to join. We've got Nestor Hernandez. Take it away, John. Uh, thanks, Randy. I'm down here with Nestor Hernandez, game winning goal scorer for the Dallas Sidekicks. Nestor, big win for you guys tonight. Uh, Keeping pace with RGB as they win tonight as well. Uh, you're trying to make a push to get into the playoffs. What does it mean to come into Tacoma and get a big win like this? Well, it means a lot to be honest. It means Tacoma's a great team. Super difficult play game against the win, but we stuck it out. We got in there. Uh, some things fell our way, and we took advantage of it. Yeah, you guys are missing uh, a few good players. Rick Cardinio didn't make the trip up here. Uh, you guys battled really hard. You fell behind a few times. What does it say about your team, the, the ability to just battle, battle, battle all night long? I just feel like when we lose one player, we have someone that's ready to step up. Um, everybody works for each other. We're working hard. So it doesn't bad itself. When one guy doesn't come, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect us. So we just work hard. Right. Honestly, everyone puts in two cents of what they have to do and don't get picked on our favor. Well, good job tonight, and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you, Randy. Let's get her back up to Brandon. So there you go, Mr. Hernandez. Very complimentary of the Stars tonight as they take home the 5-4 to four win. And uh, such a big win for the Dallas Sidekicks. A big play by Nestor Hernandez. What a fabulous finish there to break the hearts of this uh, very good crowd here at the Showwear Center tonight. I was John McLamory. My name is Brandon Sparks. And I'm just about ready to wrap things up here. And so that will do it for tonight. This telecast on MASL TV was granted by the Major Arena Soccer League. Any use and or rebroadcast requires the express written consent of the MASL for John McGlamory and the entire production team here at the Showwear Center and in the MASL. I'm Brandon jo <laughs> I'm Brandon Sparks, that is. And thanks for watching MASL TV. Good night.